Welcome, my name's Paul, and I thought I'd show a little bit about Pinard engines. I started working on these about a year ago. I have a lot of uh, automotive experience, mostly Chevrolet, Volvo, and Nissan, but the Pinards are a little bit different. And I bought this 59 uh, behind you here. Uh, this one is a Z16. It has the running gear of a PL17, if you're familiar with the Pinards. Um, but it has the older body style. I've been working on it a while, getting it roadworthy. I went through the engine about, you know, I've had this about a year. I've had it running for a little over a month. I've got a few miles on it. And uh, it's running good. I have a couple more engines, a couple more parts, and I thought I would uh, make a video about some of this. When I first got this, I couldn't find very many videos. I read a lot. I watched YouTube videos in French. The Google Translator isn't the best, so it's kind of humorous how that turns out. There's some really solid master mechanics with Pinards that you can watch in France. Um, there's probably some here in the States also. Pinard's a very old car company. Uh, you can research that, uh, take a look at it. This one was made in 59. Uh, they continue to make them in uh, the, well, they started out in the early 50s uh, on the, some of the um, Dyna Z models, they had aluminum bodies, and this one has a steel body, this Z16, and in the 60s, uh, they got bought out by Citrion. So, uh, a little bit about them, this, uh, this engine, it's a Boxster style engine, and it's a two cylinder, 850 cc, it uh, had about the same amount of horsepower as a Volkswagen four-cylinder engine. These are a four-stroke engine. They are unique in that they got quite a bit of horsepower out of 850 cc's. Uh, I will go into more of how they did that, but I wanted to show the lower end crankcase uh, setup on it. So I have two blocks, uh, or cases as you would call them here. It's not a split case. Uh, it is a one-piece case. The camshaft is down below, crankshaft's up below, above, and they have roller bearings for their main bearings. The uh, crankshaft itself will go in from the side. This one already has the crankshaft installed. This one obviously doesn't. It just has the rear main bearing. Uh, it's an interference fit. If you're going to do a rear main bearing on this, you need to uh, heat up the case a little bit and uh, remove the stake marks right here, and you can press that bearing out. Uh, you don't use uh, a big heavy press on it. I, if I remember right, the instructions in the service manual say heat it up and let it drop out. So that bearing is replaceable that way. That bearing is going to ride on the crankshaft. The crankshaft has the connecting rods on it and it can be installed inside. If you make it small enough and you get it just right, you can go ahead and wiggle it on in there. And to fully seat the uh, crankshaft down into this bearing, it's a fairly tight fit, so you heat it up with the torch a little bit. Obviously, you don't put any seals in it because you don't want to hurt the seals. And then the crankshaft will seat down in there. The crankshaft is not a strong component to this. Uh, the connecting rod bearings... Uh, if it isn't maintained properly, are going to fail. This uh, crankshaft uh, has failed. It has way too much play in the crank can in the crankshaft uh, bearing area. The crankshaft bearing is roller bearings. Here's one taken apart. It's got the cage here. Make sure you can see that the cage is going to fit in there with these really tiny rollers that go in the cage and then that's going to go on the pin here and then this crankshaft would be pressed together. 
if you've worked on motorcycles, especially the two strokes and things like that, um, I don't have the center piece on this, uh, <clears throat> this one right here that it would be pressed into, but you'd be, get, you'd be used to looking at these. Usually you send those out to a machine shop to disassemble and replace any parts, press back together, and then you have to get them aligned and balanced properly. So working with the crankshaft is not usually a job you're gonna try in your shop. I am, my shop is quite small, I do have some equipment. Um, I can have access to another shop and press these apart. Um, this particular one I was able to press apart because it has a uh, pin hole in here and you can work through that hole and um, <clears throat> work through this hole and get that pressed apart. This particular one doesn't have those holes and I am not too sure how to get it apart. So one of the, the panard experts, if you've ever taken one of those apart that does not have the holes to press it, let me know. It uh, takes some special jigs or somebody to do that. When I looked it up in the service manual that I have for Pinard, it says, send your crankshaft out to Pinard and they will fix it. Well, they still have uh, Pinards in production, but they're military vehicles if you look them up. So I don't think you're going to get your crankshaft uh, corrected out there. All right, so one of the main failures on these crankshafts is the way they lubricate it. They have an oil pump built into these, but it's a pretty low volume pressure pump. That pump is mostly designed for sending oil out to the valve train components, lubricating them. This happens to be a roller cam that's installed in that, so the oil is going to be pressure fed uh, down to those bearings and also to the outside crankshaft bearings. The front and rear also have uh, oil feeds that will run onto those bearings. To lubricate these connecting rod bearings, though, they use centrifugal force in these slingers. So what you've got I have removed it on this one. Uh, this one doesn't have it, but if we, uh, I'll zoom in on that one here in a minute. We can see that it has a uh, steel piece that's pressed into here. Oil level and quality is very important on these. So the older vehicles, um, they probably weren't even running detergent oil, and these oil feed holes would get clogged up, the ones that feed uh, pressure through this smaller hole to your connecting rod bearings. Uh, when you take one of these apart that's been sitting, it's all filled up. You've got um, a groove in over here. Let me take this off of here and get down into here. There's a groove on this down in here, right here that the oil collects in. And as the crankshaft spins, it's going to centrifugally force it around, and there's the hole that it's going to force the oil into. And that's going to make its way into the connecting rod bearing and get it lubricated. So many of these vehicles, that's the failure point. Uh, oil wasn't changed, and uh, those get plugged up. I take these apart, and they're just caked solid with uh, de uh, just debris from old engine oil and a uh, little bit of parts wear. Oil filters on these were just screens um, and uh, if you get an older Pinard, don't start it up, don't try and get it going because those are going to be plugged. You need to disassemble the engine and get it down to where you can clean those out. I watched a French video. Guy was cleaning these out. They say don't remove these steel plates here. Um, takes a special press to put them back in, but uh, it looks pretty simple to me to put them back in. Um, so cleaning these out with solvent. And the guy was even taking a torch and cleaning these out really good so they didn't uh, score up like that. Um, this is a pretty much uh, done crankshaft. This one needs repair. I've got a few other ones that are um, in decent shape. 
crankshaft's not real light. Let me set it over there. All right, so we've got a crankshaft, and it's installed in our case over here. I'm going to be referring to this one. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. And I'll set this down here and bring this guy over to here. Let me check the camera make sure you can see good. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. All right, so crankshafts, uh, this is the back end of the engine, and we're going to have our flywheel, and then we have a housing plate, looks like this, and we've got the rear main bearing, and we've got a shim to adjust end play on the crankshaft. And then on the outside of the bearing is going to be a rear main seal. Let me grab one that has a rear main seal on it. Well, that one doesn't. Uh, I've got a few over here. Let me go through them and find one with the rear main seal in it. Here's one. So the old school rear main seal was a three-piece seal. Um, and if you've ever taken apart a pump, it was kind of like that. It has a snap ring in it. and has paper on the back side with rubber in here. And that's what I put back into that Z16, and it's leaking a little bit. So I want to upgrade it to a different style seal. Um, I plan on doing that. Um, and I'll show you now what I, um, I'm planning on, how I'm planning on doing that is... I will be machining this area right in here that takes the seal. The bearing goes in the back side, and it is an interference fit. You need to heat up the outer plate, uh, of outer cover to put this in. I'll be showing uh, you that here in a little while, maybe another video. And I'm going to machine that out and get that seal to where I can press it in and use a seal, um, uh, just a regular... Um, new style neoprene seal to go in there to seal out uh, the oil and keep it in, in the engine rather than running out like it is now. I'm just dripping out here a little bit on me on that car. So what I'll do is, let me um, take this over here one second and run this over here. I'll uh, take it and put it on my little lathe. I got a hobby lathe here. I am not a machinist, but uh, I'll put it on my lathe and get that opened up a little bit to the right diameter and be able to press a, a good seal in it like that. So that's my plans on this. My next video is going to be a short one. I will set it up and show you how I check the end play on this. Again, I'm not a full Pinard uh, technician, but I've played with these a uh, little bit, and this is what I've how I've found to do that. I have one question though. I do have a rear cover that's different than all the rest of them that I have. And if I you know, leave it in the comments, if you would, I don't know what year or style this uh, rear housing cover is off of. It has this larger piece on it right here as opposed to this. It would go in sideways here. There is an oil feed hole, so that goes on the bottom and matches with this oil feed hole from the oil pump. And it would be blocking off that side of the crank, crankshaft area. So if you know what this is off of, I'm guessing it's an earlier uh, Pinard. Uh, let me know in, in the comments. I'm still learning on this. Uh, I do have a service manual, but uh, that's only good for a certain amount of reference. All right. I'm going to stop the video here, and next one I make, I'm going to show you how I check the end play on it. Thanks.